What's going on YouTube? Jeans here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, super excited to be bringing you guys a ranked regulation F team that features Raichu. Now Raichu, awesome Pokemon, has always been solid in competitive battles, but in Scarlet and Violet, its usage is really down. So in today's video, we're going to be showcasing how strong it actually is on this meta squad. Now Raichu's over here rocking the lightning rod to protect our water ogre pond and other Pokemon from electric moves. It's got citrus spray as item, and then this move set is phenomenal. You've got Electro Web, the brand new move Upper Hand, Helping Hand, and Fake Out for first turn flinches. Upper Hand is going to be very viable for us because we're going to be pairing it up with our Weakness Policy Dragonite. I know, you guys never heard of that before because Dragonite's always rocking the Choice Span or the Life Orb. Yeah, we're rocking out with Weakness Policy Dragonite, so if we normal Terrasalize, Raichu can then use Upper Hand, which is a first turn priority fighting move, proc the Weakness Policy for Dragonite, and get after it that way. Other Pokemon on today's team is going to be Shen Pao. Can I have Dragonite without Shen Pao? And then another Pokemon we're pairing up with Shen Pao is going to be Entei. Our final two Pokemon are going to be Wellspring Ogre Pond, obviously the best Ogre Pond form right now in the game. And last but not least, we got Flutterman, arguably the best Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, but we got it today. Guys, if you want to write this team for yourself, run the code is at the top right hand corner. If you do enjoy today's video, make sure you like it up and subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, let's hop into our first match showcasing Raichu. Match number one on its way, and it looks like they're going to be stopping first turn priority. They got a Psychic Terrain team, I should say a Psychic Terrain Trick Room team, because it is filled with Trick Room Pokemon. Didi, Hatterene, Torkoal, Orangaroo, Blood Moon, Ursaluna, and last but not least, they do have Incineroar. So we need a way to actually just destroy this terrain, and our only Pokemon that could do that is this Ice Spinner Shen Pal. So I'm going to end up bleeding that. We can't fake out turn one. Kind of sucks, right? Other Pokemon on today's team that I probably want to bring is going to be you, right? You are pretty solid. Nice little snarl, especially up against all these special attackers. That's something I really like, so I'm going to end up leading both of them. In the back end, we are going to bring Ogre Pond, and then I could say screw it and just bring Raichu. Or I can, you know, bring Dragonite and Raichu, which would be cool, but I'd rather bring a Pokemon like Ogre Pond. Because to be honest, Raichu not good here. He's not good here. Let's be honest, but I mean, I kind of want to bring it, right? We're showcasing a video with Raichu today. Let's do it. If I can destroy terrain, I can always use Raichu and Dragonite to their fullest ability. So that's my plan here. Destroy that terrain, get cooking from there, and see how we can actually play it. So we'll see. We shall see. But again, heavy trick room team, a lot of special attackers. Snarl is going to be our best friend for the lead here. And we're going to end up seeing who they're going to lead. And it's going to be indeed he had a ring, which I don't mind. Follow me, Trick Room. I'm just going to break terrain. I am just going to break terrain, and I'm going to snarl on top of that. Should work well. Should work well. Now, could they swap anybody into someone else, right? I mean, we should attack Ndidi, because I doubt Ndidi's protecting with his Ice Spinner. But I'm just going to do that, and I'm just going to snarl. Right? I don't think they swap here. I think they just stay Follow Me, Trick Room. It's probably the, the best bet, right? So I love Snarl here, dropping special attack early on here. Plus my Entei does have Assault Vest, which is awesome. So combine that with the minus or the drops in special attack, Entei should be able to soak up shots, no problem. So that comes to Ice Spinner. We say bye bye to Terrain, and now we need to make sure that this Indeedy dies. Because if I get Indeedy gone, my first turn priority could stay on the field for the rest of the battle. Which is awesome. So there comes the Snarl, dealing some nice damage. And we'll see what they want to do from here, right? Again, really hoping that they don't Really hoping that they don't swap Indeed here. Really hoping that they don't. Definitely a possibility though, to swap Indeed this turn. So chances are, I'm probably going to use my Focus Sash here. Actually, I already did. You have Rocky Helmet? We don't like that. We don't like that one bit. I might have end up swapping Shen Pao, or to be honest, I might just protect it. Or I could just go Sucker Punch this turn. You could go for follow me, which would be annoying. You know, we're just going to protect Shen Pao this turn. And I'm just going to go for an E speed into this slot. Looks to just KO this Pokemon. And he ends up withdrawing. Sucks, man. Really wanted to destroy the terrain. Just leave it off the field. So they're going to go back into or bring out Incineroar for the first time. And we might have to just hard swap this Entei here, right? Or not Entei, this Shen Pao. Because I want to keep it alive and the Dazzle Gleam is just going to rip into it. And most likely KO. 
So we have Hatterene minus one on special attack, which is huge. We're gonna go into E speed, chunk up some nice damage into you. And the Gleam is gonna fly. So Entei should have no problem soaking this up. Gen Pao is gonna get the blockage on that. And yeah, that's a beautiful soak up. So now sitting here is Incineroar. Incineroar could be rather annoying, especially with knockoff with Flare Blitz moves like that. But from here, I definitely want to swap Shen Pao into most likely. Oh man. Might just have to sacrifice my Raichu here. Might just have to sacrifice my Raichu here. Might just have to. Might be my play. Might be the play just to sacrifice Raichu. But Shen Pao is really just getting ripped up into here. I'm gonna swap into Raichu here. If it dies, it dies, no big deal. I'm just going to keep Snarl in the field. Actually, I might just go for Stomp and catch him in this slot. Let's just deal damage, because Hatterene's not hitting hard at all. It really isn't. So they end up withdrawing Hatterene with that minus one special attack. You know what they're gonna go into? They're gonna go back into Indeedee? They do. They end up bringing back out Indeedee, which I don't mind. As long as I can waste out these trick returns. We'll be thriving. And out comes Raichu. So if I had to guess, Flare Blitz is probably popping into the Shen Pao slot. We are going to send out Raichu. Raichu's not going to fare too well to this, this uh, Flare Blitz. And now he ends up just party shot. Never mind. So I get Raichu out here. And it's taking no damage. We don't mind that. So he party shots out. He's going to bring back out a Trick Room user or a Pokemon that thrives in Trick Room. Probably Blood Moon or Saluna. And we're going to go from there. We are going to go from there. Now Raichu's sitting here, not really doing much, and they're gonna go back into Hatterene, which I, I don't mind. I don't mind. Sopy Tantra flies, does a little bit of damage, and... Huh. How many turns are left in Trick Room is the real question. We gotta see. This is a good match. It should be two, right? Yeah, two turns left in Trick Room. And I think from here we should just... Mm, I guess we'll just E-Web. I could actually just helping hand and go for snarl. That's something I don't really mind. Helping hand snarl. I like that play. They might end up withdrawing Indeedee again. Yeah, and they do. They just want to keep that thing off the field. Keep terrain on the field. And we're going to have to start snarling here. And they'll probably go back into Incineroar. No, they go into Ursaluna, which is pretty big for me. I helping hand the snarl because I want to actually KO the... Uh, I want to try to KO the what's called with it, which would have been nice. The Indeedee. But they end up swapping it into Ursaluna. So the Snarl is going to be pretty big for us. So we end up Snarling here. Nice. Getting that special attack drop on two big time special attackers. They still have Trick Room for one more turn. And now I get to bring out... Who do I bring out here? Do I bring out Shen Pao and just protect? I mean, that's kind of obvious that if we do that. I could bring out just Dragonite and protect. Make things a bit simpler. Two inner focus Pokemon. Hmm. So we have to finish off Trick Room. That's the absolute, that's, that's a must. It's a must. We can't pop with this policy, which really sucks for me. You know, I'm just gonna go and do this. So Dragonite's gonna come out here. I'm just gonna protect the Dragonite this turn. Probably gonna go for Dazzling Gleam. And we'll save our Terror type, right? If I get off another Snarl, I would love to get off another Snarl, but I think they end up swapping a Pokemon. They're playing this one really well, to be honest. Keeping terrain control is just a huge factor in this match. A huge factor. Let's see. So we tried getting out Raichu. I knew it would have been. A, I knew it was a bad call, but be like that. I should have just rocked with the Ogre Pond. It was simple. It was simple. But I know recently a lot of people have been saying, "Yo, Jeans, you gotta showcase the uh, the thumbnail Pokemon more." I feel like I do a good job on. So I'm just trying to do it a little bit better job for you guys. Let's see what they end up doing. They're gonna end up to Rasalize. A little Terra type going on. A little tire type going on for Ursulina, who's minus one, so I'm glad he's staying on the field. He's just going to go into a straight normal type, so Hyper Voice going to fly th through here. That's in Gleam. We get to bring out Shen Pao Ampers, and on top of that, we get some nice speed cooking. We get some nice speed cooking after this. Now comes the Gleam. We blocked that. It's not KO in the Entei, but Hyper Voice is definitely going to KO in the Entei, right? Unless, I mean, maybe we can soak it up? Soul Vest, that thing, minus one. He does hit hard though. Stab, terror boost it. Let's see, y'all. If Entei could soak up, that'd be amazing. But I doubt it. Yeah, I didn't think so. Blood Moon Ursaluna hits way too hard, especially with the normal Terra. It's just ripping. Okay, so second turn still on the field. I would love for them to actually pop my weakness policy. So I think from here, 
Since we don't want him to set up Trick Room, we just attack this Hatterene, right? Do we have to double down this Hatterene? I think so. Or I could just attack the Ursula. Oh man, we got options. We got options here. I'm gonna go Aerial Ace into this slot. Um, I could go Stellar Terra. Might just end up protecting the Shen Pao. No, we're gonna double down because they might protect the Ursula or even swap Ursula. They could end up swapping Ursula. So our main focus here is to just rip up here. And they do swap Ursula. So this was a good call for me to just double down in Hatterene and get after. They might even protect Hatterene, which would be a smart call. But they're gonna intimidate me. Well, at least intimidate my Shen Pao. The Shen Pao is going to get a lowered stat. I could see my boy Dragon it really clutch this matchup. I'm gonna say bye bye to Hatterene, which is huge. We get a crit too. Get on out of here, which means Aerial Ace is sliding over. That's big news. Getting some damage off onto Incineroar. We love it and we take out Terrain, which are just gonna bring back on Terrain, right? Aerial Ace chunking up some damage. So Barry comes out here. Um, they can fake out Shen Pao next turn. Uh, I could protect it. I could just double protect and allow that to play out. We'll see who they bring out here. It's a real question, right? Indeedy? Most likely. No, Blood Moon Ursaluna comes right back out here. So I think to be honest, our play here is to just double protect. Because I think they're just going to parting shot. Try to go into the Dragonite slot. Maybe just protect Ursaluna. But I'm just going to protect here just to dodge this fake out turn and allow my Pokemon to kind of settle down a little bit. And get after it. So all they have left is Indeedy in the back end, which is good. We're just not going to go for first time priority moves. We don't even have to, to be honest, considering we have speed control. But we're looking just to do as much damage as we possibly can. So the protects come out. I love it. I could start using Outrage, which Outrage does ridiculous damage. There's the fake out, and I should have honestly just went protect Shen Pao and attack someone else, but that works out fine. They ends up going for the Hyper Voice. Um, I still have Terra. I still have Terra, and I might end up using Stellar Terra type here. Being minus one, just to attack this. I'm going to Outrage, though. I'm definitely going to Outrage. And I might Stellar Terra type just to attack this. Incineroar here. We're trying to do as much damage as we can. I don't really think the normal Terra type benefits us that much. Considering our typing is pretty solid, but he ends up withdrawing. Okay, that's fine. He ends up withdrawing. The Shen Pao is going to get his nice little Stellar Terra here. And Outrage is going to fly. Outrage is flying. So he wants to intimidate again. Outrage should do a significant amount of damage. Hopefully it's hitting into the Ursula slot. That'd be massive. And I don't know if my Pokemon really eat up these hyper forces. I don't think Shen Pao does. I think uh, Dragonite can. This hyper voice, but I don't think Shen Pao does. We end up going for Stellar Terror type. Sacred Sword, can this just KO, hopefully? I don't think it can. It does. Beautiful. Awesome. The Stellar Terror type actually clutching up there. Getting rid of that. And hoping that Outrage can do a ridiculous amount of damage. Outrage coming hot here. Doing huge damage, but Ursaluna at full HP is tough. He's gonna Blood Moon me down, too. He Blood Moon. Can you soak this? I, there's no way you do. I'm not, I don't even know why I'm thinking about it. And this match is coming down to it. It's really coming down to it. He's obviously gonna fake me out here, right? He's obviously gonna fake me out here. We can now protect this turn. And we have two Pokemon really low on HP, right? Actually, you're pretty middle of the line here. You're pretty middle of the line. And I'm minus two. That sucks, man. That sucks. So this first match really, really actually coming down to me not bringing a different Pokemon besides Raichu. Let's be honest. If I bring Ogre Pond here or something, we thrive. We thrive out here when we win this match, no problem. To be, yeah. If we have an extra Pokemon besides that, oh man, we are killing it. We are killing it. But I mean, from here, definitely want to just try to KO this Ursuline because he's going to hit hard. And I think that's game regardless, right? I think we have to KO both, because if not, Flare Blitz flies into this slot, Blood Moon flies into the Ursaluna slot. We're just sitting in a tough position right now. So maybe, just maybe, I don't know, something happens, you miss clicks. There's the Flare Blitz, that's game, right? Yep, game all day. So GG to our opponent, solid matchup. They kept the terrain out there for a good amount of time. But really, again, if I brought in a different Pokemon besides Raichu, I feel like we would have won this match. 
Hopping into our second match, and yes, I know that Raichu Call in the last match just wasn't good. I knew it from the beginning. Psychic Train, Tricker, and Pokemon, Raichu really didn't thrive out there. But we're hopping into our second match, and this seems like a good place where Raichu can actually thrive out. So I am going to lead Raichu here and Dragonite while we go up against this decently meta squad, right? They got Landorus, they also got Ranging Bolt, rocking out with Ogre Pond, Fluttermane. Um, who else do you got? Comfy and Gouging Fire. So I like Dragonite here, especially with E Speed going crazy. And I like Raichu to probably pop that weakness policy. So that's going to be really good for us. In the back end here, um, Fluttermane could be good. Ogre Pond could be good. Uh, hmm. I'm leaning a bit towards Ogre Pond. So you could do some big time damage. And last but not least, probably Shen Pao. Especially because we have Sucker Punch. I do like that. So that's going to be the squad. We're locking it in. We're locking it down. Let's like, grab ourselves a win here in match number two. We almost had that win in match number one, which would have been crazy because, again, we just basically 3 v four that battle. I knew Raichu wasn't going to be good. We just sacrificed him pretty much, let him die out, and kind of just went from there, and it was super, super close. Came down to a 1v1 situation. They were able to just rip up into me, take me out with the fire bloods, and call game. But, hey, we're not going to go down without a fight. We're going to win this matchup for you guys right here. So Raichu looking to just pop upper hand into Dragonly here. We're really hoping Fluttermane's not going to be lead, but every time I say something like that, the opposite always happens, right? So Fluttermane's going to be lead. I, I, like, come on now. <laughs> every time I say it. Every time I say it. So to be honest, I could make a hard read and be like, yo, that Fluttermane, normal tearing, and I can fake it out. That might be my call. Am I man enough to do that, though? Am I man enough to do that? I could actually just go here. Go for an E-Web and just protect this turn. But in that case... Ooh, ah. It's probably just going to burn a bulwark. You know what? You know what? This is what we're going to do. You might just burn a bulwark here. So you know what? You know what? You know what? We're just going to go... Upper hand into you, Terrasalize, Aerial Ace into Fluttermane. And I know Fluttermane's Terrasalizing, and it's not. So good thing I didn't go for big brain play and try to make an overread call. But hopefully, that thing's going for a burning bulwark because we do have fake out here. And in this case, we can just whip up here and uh, take out this Fluttermane. Yep, there's burning bulwark. It's kind of cool. We're not faking that thing out. We're not doing that. We're just, it's just not happening. It's just not happening. So upper hand coming through here. We're going to hit the little slap skis here. It failed? Did I not use upper hand into my... Dragonite? Did I not just do that? Did, did I not just use upper hand in Dragonite? Why'd this fail? Why did this fail? I'm very curious. Oh. Um, makes sense. I have to be using a priority move. Makes sense. Makes sense. So you know what? Now we're going to use a priority move. <laughs> now we're going to be using it. Okay. Makes sense now. Makes sense now. Okay. I was very confused. I was very confused. I never tried this. I never tried this before. I haven't really used upper hand too much, but now we're trying it. You have to be using a priority move in order for this priority move to go before it. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, so now we pop the weakness policy. And I'm going to drop it E-Speed and do some big time damage. Okay, makes sense now. Moonblast is going to fly here. I'm going to go into Raichu. Raichu actually survives and Citrus Berries up. We like that. We like that. And from here, he's just going to go for a breaking swipe, which is fine. Raichu survives on one. <laughs> Raichu getting after it. So now I can simply just E-speed here. Um, I think my play would be, because I think you're going to go for a burning bulwark. It's just going to be just protect you. And kind of go from there, maybe try to drop an E-web. But I was very confused why the, help, the upper hand didn't work. I was just like, let me go check out its, uh, its saying here. It's little info. And now it makes sense. Upper hand is a new move, so bear with me, guys. Haven't really used it too much, but hopefully they're just going for a nice little moon blast into this slot. Probably Dazzling Gleam's gonna come out here. No, they do go for the moon blast. We love it. We love it. 
So Ewebs is actually going to slow this Pokemon down a little bit. Maybe making Raichu fastest on the field. That'd be big time. That'd be big time. So Raichu actually doing pretty good here. Get off that. Another Eweb will KO. Let me see some speed action here. What's your speed here? What's your speed, little guy? 178. I think you're fastest on field. I like that. So we're going to go for another Eweb. I'm just going to go for an extreme speed. So good protect for me. Surprise he went into the Moonblast. That doesn't gleam usually the call, but it might be choice into um, Moonblast here. But he's going to end up terrasalizing. Terror type comes out here. Are you ghost for some reason? Steel, what you got? You're ghost, you son of a biscuit. You little booger. Gonna go ghost typing here. Smart little play. Drop the little ghost type. E speed going to get blocked. Well, not even blocked. Just not gonna affect him. And Dazzleem, you still outspeed me. That's a big time Dazzleem. This kind of sucks that you do outspeed me. So we're gonna end up picking up no KOs when I thought we had a chance of picking up two. He's gonna end up D dancing. The D dance comes out here. Things are getting a little scary. Um, we're gonna go into Shen Pao, and we're gonna start throwing sucker punches. Probably just goes for a breaking swipe, right? Um, I would think so. I would think breaking swipe would come through here, but who would I rather attack? Probably Fluttermane. Fluttermane just protect Dragonite again. I'm gonna end up burning Bulwark. That's huge. It's fine. I'm cool with that. Cool with that. So the burning bulwark is gonna come out here. I could sucker punch that next turn if I wanted to. I'm just gonna protect the dragonite. Protect the dragonite. Sucker punch gonna fly. We're gonna say bye bye to flutter. Now would have been. I think that, that that dude was gambling a bit too much. Now would have been that turn for that guy to just double down on attacks. Considering he's sitting in a decent position. So now we have a plus two. A plus two dragonite sitting here. They have a plus one speed and attack. Pokemon right there, who I could just sucker punch. I'm looking just e speed whatever Pokemon comes out of here. You're getting e speeded. You are so getting e speeded. You are so getting e speeded. So I'm gonna go for e speed here. I think e speed should KO. Let's be honest here. Let's be honest. E speed should KO. And the reason I say e speed should KO is because Dragonite, you're plus two, correct? Plus one. Oh, they intimidated me. You're plus one. You got the normal terror type, and on top of that, you are next to Shen Pao, giving you a bunch of boost. We love it. We love it. So, gonna go into the E-Speed in this slot. You could be Choice Scarfed, but first and priority really gonna help us out here. And we're gonna pop this right here. Well, bam big time damage. Oh my lord, leaving you on red, which really sucks. Sucker Punch gonna come out here. It's going to fail. Going for another Dragon. Smart Call on the right. So, he's doing that. What are you popping? EQ? What you got cooking here? I don't even know. What are you doing? Rock slide? Rock tomb. Going to do some damage. And from here, I still like spam and sucker punch, right? I still like spam and sucker punch because I'm just going to keep spamming E-Speed. They might end up swapping this landorus here. Just get intimidated off later. But I still like where we're sitting. Got Ogre Pond in the back end. Um, spam and sucker punches because this thing outspeeds me now being plus two. And honestly, last turn, I should have just attacked it, because that thing being plus one, we were still fine with just attacking. So they're probably just going to go for a Burning Bulwark. We're going to keep E Speed in here. Keep chumping up some damage, and he's going to go into this Pokemon. So there's the Burning Bulwark. So he's just looking. I'm going to keep spamming this, right? I mean, no reason not to. E Speed flying. How much damage are we doing? This thing does get first turn priority with, with Triage, but E Speed's going to have priority over that, so... This just seems like a free just keep spamming here and e-speeding. It seems so free. It seems so free. We're just doing too much damage after this Raichu popped out with this policy. Yeah, so this thing's going to probably pop another Dragon Ant. I know it's definitely scary to attack. But I'm just going to keep trying to just tackle down this left side while this thing either protects or when it eventually goes for a move, we take it out. But I have five more Sucker Punches, so I'll use them all. Because eventually, this is what's going to happen. It's either he's going to keep protecting and doing his Burning Bulwark, Dragon Dance kind of moves. And that actually outspeeds me. Oh, we lived on one. That's crazy. That's crazy. That actually goes before E-Speed. Actually, that is wild. That is wild. But hey, we survived and everything worked out fine. But again, I'm just going to keep doing this until he attacks. Or it turns into like a 2v1 and then we can just attack normally. So there's that. 
Sucker Punch going to fly through here, and he finally attacks you. So wow, we actually survived on one, which was massive. Which was massive, because if we dry die out to that Draining Kiss, this turns to a 2v1 for them. So Shen Pao, thank you so much for the Freeze Focus Ash. We'll take that all day. We'll take that all day. So there we go, now it turns into a 2v1 with just Intimidate Lando, and they're just going to cancel the matter. So really close battle here. We still had Ogre Pond in the back end, so I think we still would have thrived out no matter what. Awesome. So, gonna suck a punch here. Gun E speed, GG to their opponent. They probably end up just canceling this match, right? Most likely. Unless they have some wild plans schemed up. Yeah, battle was canceled. One and one. Let's go hop into a third. Look for a 2 1 winning record. Final match on its way. Would honestly love to use Raichu again here in match number three. But to be honest, Psychic Terrain is scaring me. We lost in match number one using that thing in second terrain, so we might not even bring it here in match number three. We have to showcase it fully in match number two, so I'm very happy with today's video. But I kind of want to get that winning record, right? Kind of want to get that winning record. So, to be honest, they could lead Incineroar, they could lead Iron Crown, they could lead DD, multiple different options here. And I think going into Shen Pao is going to be a solid little lead for us because they don't go Incineroar, then they're probably going in with the Iron Crown and the DD combo, and then we can just break through. But in that case, do we go Fluttermane? I don't even know if I want to go Shen Pao. We might just go like Fluttermane or, you know what? Could go Raichu Dragonite. That first turn priority is just killing. It's killing. You know what? We're going to go. We're going to go here and we're going to go Fluttermane. That's my best bet. We're going to bring Ogre Pond in the back end. And last but not least, we're going to go Entei. I like Entei a little bit more here than Dragonite because if they do end up getting Terrain up, and take it'll still thrive out there. Plus, they have a few special attackers, three special attackers, I should say. So we can eventually snarl them, dropping their special attack, and really helping us out late game. So, yeah, that's the plan. No Raichu here in match number three. I feel like I showcased it really well. Tough Pokemon to get in here, especially with all the psychic terrain on the field in this meta. So they're gonna end up leading. Is that Incineroar? Incineroar Flood, man. Okay. So they're gonna get off a free intimidate here. Um do I Terrastalize? Most likely, right? Terrastalize, Dazzle Gleam. Seems like our best play. And I could honestly just stay in here with... With Shen Pao. Or I could hard swap it. I could hard swap it. Um, Who would be my best bet? Maybe Urpon? Oh, yeah, Entei. What should be best? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna swap an Entei here. So I'm gonna go Entei. Um... I am just going to Terrasalize and just throw a Moonblast into the Fluttermane slot. He could Parting Shot at me, but uh, yeah, I think now's a good time to just attack the Fluttermane. I'm waiting for the day where somebody fakes out my Fluttermane reading the Terra type. I'm waiting for the day. I'm waiting for the day. I was thinking about doing it, I think it was the last match. I forget. I forget. But like, I'm waiting for the day where somebody's just like, hey, yo, you're Terrasalize this Fluttermane. I'm faking it out. I know it's coming soon. I know it's coming soon. I know it's definitely coming soon, but we have to terrestrialize our Fluttermane just in case they want to go for a Shadow Ball. And I would bl would believe they do the same thing. No, they don't. So they end up faking out the Shed Pal slot. There's now Entei, and Moonblast is going to flip. The Moonblast coming across here, chucking up some big time damage, half it, and it's good to know that we outspeed And we did get a special attack drop, which is massive. And there's the Shadow Ball. That's exactly why we terrestrialize. Beautiful. So Flutter. Bruh. You get a crit? What you mean? You get a crit? Come on now. Not cool. Not cool you get a crit. You get a crit. So I am just going to end up protecting. Actually, I might just double down in this slot. This Fluttermane might protect here. I'm going to double down in this slot. I'm going to read a protect here for Fluttermane. Or withdrawal. That works. That works. So we're doubling down into Incineroar here. They are going to go into... Indeed here. They're gonna pop a little bit of psychic terrain. So psychic terrain comes out here. We love it. We don't mind that turn. And I make a nice little read to actually go after this incineroar. So incineroar is gonna end up to last last. Until what typing? Probably the most perfect typing ever. And water. Okay, so water, eh, that's okay. I mean Fluttermane can still chunk up some nice damage with Moonblast. Let's be honest, uh Simon Tantrum's not really doing too much after this. And we're going to pop this into this slot. I'm still upset that we didn't get a crit. 
or they got a crit on my Fluttermates. Fluttermates should have a lot more HP than this. They were minus one. Would have been sitting fine. And now I now I lose Indeedee here. Which Indeedee was probably so good at the shot. And they end up going after Entei. Okay. Um, you give my Fluttermate another turn. Give my Fluttermate another turn. So I'm going to go for a Snarl into Indeedee. I'm going to attack this slot right here. And he's going to go for a Fomb. Okay. I was going to say good fire instead. But I was thinking maybe like that's what was fine. But I'm really surprised they went after Entei there. Really surprised. So Moonblast going to fly over into Indeedee. Doing half. We're just chunking up damage here. The Snarl is going to come across here. Nice, lovely Snarl. Let's see where chances are. It goes for a Darkest Lair. It just takes out my Fluttermane, correct? Yeah. So Fluttermane is now gone. And now I get to bring out Shen Pao. So we got a lot of speed cooking here. And I'm looking just to break terrain, right? I'm looking to just break this terrain. So now's the perfect time to bring out Shen Pao. We can save our Ogre Pond for later. Or I could bring it out here now. But I want to break terrain. I want terrain gone. I want it out of here. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. Just don't want to deal with it. To be honest, this Pokemon kind of scares me. He does scare me. Hmm. I'm just going to take out Ndidi. He might swap it. I'm just going to protect this thing. I'm just going to protect Shen Pao. Let's be honest here. I could have bro broken terrain, but I think they might even protect or something. Follow me, that's fine. And yeah, then next turn, I can just attack that thing freely. And take out terrain at the same time. Okay. Mm. Let's see, you gotta be going for Flare Blitz, right? Yeah, okay, cool. I'll get off a free turn there. Wasting out terrain a little bit. Now's the time to break it. They could, ooh, they could go into Flutter Me. Which, if Fluttermane comes out here, I mean, I don't mind it, and that is exactly what's going to happen. I have Focus Sash, so Focus Sash is going to be massive. So at this point, we're just going to break terrain, and... Should I just Snarl? I mean, I guess I'll go for Stop again, Shamir. I could go for Sucker Punch. I could... I, no, I can't. I can't. There's terrain. We're going to have to break this terrain. I'm going to finish off this terrain here, and you are out. Oh, uh, yeah, I knew you were outspeed. I was going to say, you're outspeed, and it's crazy, but I remember. I had Focus Sash. So Focus Sash comes down here, we use it up this turn. We're gonna Ice Spinner, we're gonna break down this terrain, we'll say bye bye to it, and we're gonna allow our first and priority move to actually start working. So I get rid of you, chances are Incineroar takes out my Shen Pao. But then next turn, I can just E speed that pick that up, right? Yeah, because most likely you're not rocking protect. Most likely you are not rocking protect. And stop and catch him this close to finishing off. And they leave Shen Pao on the field. They leave Shen Pao with Sucker Punch on the field. And now I get to bring out my Ivy Cudgel. Little Pokemon, and we can go from there. And I still have Terra, don't I? No, I use it with Fluttermane. I fluttered up. Cool. So Ogre Pond comes out here for the final Pokemon. They're gonna bring out Iron Crown. I don't know how to feel about that. Iron Crown definitely looking a little scary. And from here, he's gonna boost your energy up. And if that speed's gonna force me to go to Sucker Punch, it's gonna be special attack. So Shen Pao, gonna be fastest on the field. Hands down, fastest on the field. Um. Could still go for Sucker Punch. Probably should just go for a Sacred Sword. To be honest, because, again, we're faster than these guys. So there's no point in going for Sucker Punch. I'm just going to go for Sacred Sword. Finish you off here. Bang, see you later. And I beat Cudgel coming out here doing some big-time damage. I wonder who he's going to attack here. Because if you don't attack Shen Pao, we pretty much win this game. Because Sucker Punch can just finish you off. And I outspeed you anyway. So this is pretty much wraps. It's pretty much wraps. Ogre Pond coming out here. Big time damage. Attack on Connor gonna finish off Shen Pao. But again, now we're sitting here 1v1. My Ivy Cudgel Ogre Pond outspeeds. It's gonna be night night. It's gonna be night night. Plus, we can chance are we're gonna be able to soak up whatever shot you have to offer. So let's just do that. Yep, Ivy Cudgel coming out here. Well, bam. See you later. 2 1 for today's video showcasing this amazing Raichu Man. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, two and one for today's video. Use an upper hand Raichu for my first time ever in Scarlet and Violet. Upper hand, cool new move right there. Only goes before priority moves. We actually learned that in match number two. It's still 
rocked out with it, right? Proc, weakness policy with Dragonite, and I think we're doing crazy damage with Aerial Aces, E-Speeds, all that good stuff. But guys, that is going to be for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos are good live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread some positivity today, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.